All right, let's go ahead. Um, let's start with the uh, basic like warm up I usually do at the noon class, head circles. Switch directions. Good, arm circles. Switch. Side to side. Good. Hips. Switch. Good. Bend at your knees slightly. Just drop down and hang out. Spread your feet apart just a little bit. And rock back and forth side to side to wake up your hamstrings. Hands on the floor, feet apart. Break it knees side to side. Your toes pointed forward. Good. Now point one toe up. All right, let's sit <coughs> in an omoplata position. Good. Stretch out over your knee. Switch. Stretch. Switch. Switch. Now we're going to switch, rock up, push our hips forward. Switch sides. Switch. And switch. Good. Grab your uh, hamstrings, just kind of rock back and forth. Now we we'll rock back and hold. Come forward and straddle. Just kind of work wherever you need to on the straddle, whether it's straight down, down each leg, to find what's tight and spend a little time there.
Okay, rock back and hold. Come forward and straddle. Rock back and hold. Come forward and straddle. Good. All right, let's get on all fours. Let's do some sit throughs. Just sit. Good. Let's work on our bumps. All right. So I'm here. Okay, first bump I'm gonna do is just side to side. My knees are gonna redirect. I'm gonna bump up onto my shoulders. Good. Now I'm gonna hook the arm, hook the foot, pendulum my head, right? Just like mount escape, bump, come to my knees. Okay, sit through, back to my back, switch sides, hook the arm, hook the leg, pendulum my head, bump up to my knees, okay, sit through, start over, hook, hook, pendulum, bump, switch, sit through, start over, hook, Hook, pendulum, bump, sit through, come over. <laughs> now, I'm gonna do my head bridge for the arm bar escape. So the arm is here, so if the, uh, my right arm is getting taken in the arm bar, I'm gonna be walking over my left shoulder. So I'm up on my head, walking over and through, sitting out like this. Left arm goes, left arm goes up on my head, rolling over my right shoulder, walking my feet around. Right arm goes up onto my head, rolling over my left shoulder. Get through, left arm. Good. All right. Let's just do our shrimps. Basic shrimp. Okay. I want you to do like a sliding shrimp here like this. Okay. Then we're going to do a reverse shrimp to come back. Okay. We're going to switch sides. Other leg, sliding shrimp. My hip is still elevated above my shoulder. My top shoulder still comes in front of my bottom shoulder. Right. I'm shrimping. Okay. Now I'm going to reverse shrimp to come back. Good. Power shrimps. So my hips come up one direction, my hips shoot out. Reverse shrimp back, power shrimp up, shoot out, 
Reverse shrimp back. Reverse shrimp back. Reverse shrimp back. Now I'm going to sit up, work my way forward. It comes off the floor, right? One hand, good. We're just going to go back, same side. And then switch. Forward. Good, back. Good, this time we're going to alternate hands. And then we're going to do two hands butt scooting on the way back. Alternate. Two hands scoot back. One more time. Good. All right. Anything I missed? A little review there. I think I got most of it. Let's see. Shrimp versus shrimp, power shrimp. Scoot back and forth. Yep, yep, yep. All right, we're good. Okay. Um, today we're going to, you know, Monday's class is similar to Tuesday's. Usually on the second day, I get a little bit better at teaching stuff. Or like one day there will be a detail that you miss on the next day. Um, so I think it's good to come to both classes. Plus just for the review, you know, it's excellent to come to both classes. We're going to work on heisting from the bottom like hip heisting, right? Which is, it starts off kind of like a shrimp, but in this scenario, we're looking more to pick up a single leg, kind of like we do on Bishop Sport. Uh, Carrie, you don't know Bishop Sport yet, but it's one of the flows that we do for the purple belt testing, okay? So, what I'm gonna do, all right, I'll show you the move and then I'll, then I'll show you it with Armando on top of me so it makes a little more sense, okay? I'm here, I'm in my regular position. Okay, I'm doing my regular bump just like I'm gonna power shrimp, right? Here, okay, this elbow turns in to get the underhook, right? I kind of power shrimp my body away if I can, okay? Now from here, there's still gonna be a cross space across my net, net, so I may bump up again here and shrimp out a little bit, okay? The big difference from here is that instead of just shrimping and driving with the lead elbow, I'm gonna switch my feet, okay? I'm gonna rock up onto my shoulder and come up onto my single leg. So, Armando, if you'll do me the, the pleasure, get over here. Okay, so, um, actually, turn to this side. Okay, so if we start here, the first thing I need to do is get my underhook to clear a path that gets my knees. Okay. Now, if I just try to bump or if I just try to like reach my arm out and take the underhook, he's going to trap my arm and now I've got problems. Okay. Even if I just bump and then try to do this and bring it out and in, he's got a good chance to trap my arm. So what I want to do on this first bump is I want to rotate my elbow and hand inside, right? I'm not moving it away, coming up deep on this underhook. All right. The second problem that I have, move with me, is this cross face here, or shoulder pressure, right? Shoulder pressure, excuse me, my allergies. Um, the shoulder pressure here on my neck, okay? So I need to be able to turn into him. So I may have to bump again to get this shoulder pressure off and be able to turn my head inside, like this, right? Now, if I stay, if my back shoulder is behind my front shoulder again, he can flatten me out. So from here, I need to do a little shrimp to get my body away, and be able to pull my back shoulder back. So now when he goes to flatten me out, it's much more difficult, which allows me to come up on the single. Oops, all right, good. Now I'm on the single leg, right? I can come across and finish here, okay? Or like John, uh, one of the moves John showed on uh, Monday is a sit out, or Saturday is a sit out. So like if Armando sprawls super hard, I can always rotate my head out and go, okay? If you were in John's class on Saturday, just kind of take note of that. 
I'm not going to have you do that part. If you want to add it on your own, that's fine. If you kind of know the sit out, but all I'm doing there is rotating my head and sitting through like that. So again, without Armando on top of me, I'm here, right? I bump, my arm swims underneath. So I've got my underhook here. Now I've got to get this shoulder pressure off of my head on this side. So I'm gonna to need to bump again, start to shrimp my body away, okay? If I'm at an angle or I can switch my feet and come up, I'll do it. If not, I'll take another little shrimp. Switch. Come up, hit the single. All right, so lay down, we'll walk to it by the numbers. I'll do it and say it at the same time. Hands in tight. Okay, let's imagine your opponent's on your left hand side. All right, so my knees are gonna point left. I'm gonna bump up into them. I'm gonna rotate my right arm underneath. Get that strong underhook. Now imagine I have shoulder pressure on my chin. Okay, I'm gonna take another bump and move my head inside their arm. Right, from here if I need to, I'll shrimp my body away if I'm not at a good angle. Right, my top shoulder should be past my bottom shoulder. I'm gonna switch my legs, come up on the single, and be in a good finishing position. All right? I'll watch this time, but I'll still walk you through it, all right? Opponents on your left hand side, you're bumping, your right arm swims under for the underhook. Good. If you need to, you're gonna bump again to get rid of that cross face pressure. Good, yep, shrimp those hips back. Make sure your top shoulder's in front of your bottom shoulder. Scissor your legs, come up to your knees. Right, good job. Keep going. Good, switch your feet, Alexis. It's Alexis. Armando. Sorry, your sister's Alexis, right? Alexa, sorry, Alexa. Switch your feet. Ashley, when she's here, make sure she switches her feet before she comes up. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more scenario and you can keep working on this. So, it can be if somebody's doing a standing guard pass on you, right? And he's coming to one side, right? And I'm here like this. I can still use this position to come up on the leg here, right? So I can still use this as an option if I'm not comfortable playing my guard against this person or if I need to get on top for whatever reason, okay? Same rules apply from here, right? I can catch, I can pick this far leg or if he sprawls, right? My head circles underneath. I hit my sit out. All right, good. Let's do it a few more times. Just keep doing it from side control. And then, um, you know, we'll, we'll move on.
I hate it when I get a text from someone who I know is a student and all I can read is like, hey, how are you guys doing through this crisis? I'm like, oh, here it comes. You know, here comes another cancellation. What a nightmare this thing's been, man. All right, good. Okay, let's move on to um, <clears throat> a technical, some people call it technical stand-up. I call it standing in base. Um, guys like John Donaher call it hip heisting, whatever. It's all, it's all the same. Okay. There's two, there's several reasons we use the standing in base position. Okay. I'll show you basically what it is, right? I've got one hand here close to my hip. <clears throat> the other hand is out. It's, it's a lot like the scooting position that we were working from, right? Okay. Except for instead of scooting, we're going to come up. Now we can come up all the way to our feet where I take my chest down, I put my foot back behind my hand, and then I stand, right? Or we can just simply come up to a knee. We usually do this if my opponent's on the ground, maybe trying to pass my guard, and I wanna try to come up on top or front headlock them or whatever, all right? So let's practice these moves a couple times. Let's practice standing all the way up. One thing that's important is I don't want my chest facing the ground when I lift my hips off the ground. As soon as I lift my hips off the ground, my chest turns downwards like this, okay? My foot goes back, right? My, notice that my foot is behind my hand. I don't want my foot here. Armando, come over here for a second. Right, a couple things, right? If I'm leading with my chest, meaning that if I come up, uh, I'm going to push my chest back to the floor, all right? So if I come up here and I don't turn my shoulders and I just come up like this and Armando pushes me, I'm going to fall back down. If I turn my chest down to the floor and Armando pushes me, I'm in a pretty steady position. Foot comes back behind the hand. If my foot doesn't come behind the hand and Armando pushes me, so if my foot's stuck here and he pushes me, I start to fall. Okay. When the foot comes behind the hand and he pushes, he can't move me. All right? So let's just try standing all the way up for a few times and then we'll work on the the one knee isn't quite as quite as technical go ahead Good. Okay. Come here, Armando, come over here. All right. So I usually stand up. Um, if it's a grappling match, right, and Armando is in this position, and I decide, you know what, I like my chances better on my feet trying to take him down than I do playing my guard with him, I'm just simply going to post a hand on one of his shoulders, and I'm going to stand. He's going to be super close. Okay. So then I play, uh, you know, that way. We're not going to go into all the self-defense stuff. We do that from uh, in like our street self-defense series. We'll get to this. But in self-defense, I use it as a distance management tool. You know, if Armando's this close, I'm usually back like this, kicking at his knees because I don't want to stand up here in self-defense because I don't want him to punch me while I'm standing. Right? It's only when he moves further back that, I'm, that it's safe to stand. I can stand up and move or I force him back with maybe a little leg kick here and stand up that he moves, okay? <clears throat> but we're going to keep today focused on sport jiu-jitsu, all right? Another way I might use this is generally like when the person is uh, maybe on his knees, right, in this position, looking to kind of enter to pass my guard. So I'm in a position where I can, you know, scoot backwards to manage distance, right, scoot forward and maybe look for the arm drag. I'm also in a position, 
particularly if he's trying to tie up my legs, where I can post here, right? I can pop up to one knee and bring his head down at the same time and start working my front headlock. I can work my guillotine choke from here, or I can cross face and spin to the back. Okay. So a lot of times I'll use this in combination when I've got somebody playing here, maybe I'll scoot into them and see what happens. Maybe I'll scoot away. Maybe I'll come up, right? And just see if I can change the angle and change the game. Anytime I can get to this position, I 100% take it. You know, sometimes I'm here, we're playing that game and I go to pop up, I can't move his head, right? He may elevate his head. At that point, it might allow me to slide into my guard a little bit deeper whether I'm playing butterfly guard or whether I jump all the way to close guard or whatever. I'm just, I'm opening him up. Either he's going to open up and posture up for me or his head's going to be low and I'm going to have to be able to take advantage of that and snap his head down and get into a front headlock position. So one more time from here, right? I'm posting, I'm up. Now, as I come up, if I feel his head's low and his weight is forward, I'm going to bring my hand to the neck right after my initial movement and use my body momentum to bring him down so his hands have to touch the floor. Okay, so that's what I want you visualizing right now. We're here, right? I'm checking him here with my hand. Okay, I'm posting up, pulling the head down. Got it? All right, let's do it. <clears throat> Good. All right, good, good time. So basically from that butt scoot position, we have three ways that we can kind of manage our distance and change our angle, okay? Um, Come here, Armando. Obviously scooting back, either one-handed or two-handed, or managing distance if I feel like he's getting a little too close because I want to establish my grips before he establishes his, right? Moving forward, I can be a little more aggressive to tie up his legs or his arms. <clears throat> and then I can change the level that we're fighting at by coming up to a knee or coming up all the way to my feet. So I can go backwards, forwards, upside down. Also, remember, I want to make sure that I'm never giving him two sides to pass to. So I don't want to be like centered on him, right? So uh, put your butt toward the video camera. Right? I don't want to be like centered in here unless I have my grips and I'm ready to go. 
Okay. Even here like this, I don't want to have him to have the option of going both ways. I'm going to always favor one side a little bit. So I'm forcing him to one side. It just cuts down on the things that he can do. Okay. Even if he's on his knees, I'm going to play a similar game. I know y'all probably can't see me here, but I'm going to force him to one side. Just go over a little bit. So this angle, like a 45 degree angle. Yeah. Or actually put your butt towards you in that case. Right. I'm rarely going to play like right in the center line here. I'm going to play just a little bit off. Okay. Still kind of forcing him to go one way. All right. Okay. Let's, um, let's move on to leg pummeling. All right. This is super important when it comes to passing the guard or sorry, retaining your guard. Okay. Um, the basic movement is just like this. Notice that my feet's rotating, my knees rotating, and my hip is rotating. When I add the other foot, they kind of go opposite ways. And the faster I go, the more you can kind of see the hip rotation that's involved. Okay, and then you can switch sides with it. Switch sides with it, right? Switch and switch. Okay, do it with one leg. Go the opposite way. Do it with the other leg. Go the opposite way. Okay. I can also add a shrimp. I can shrimp, pummel, right? Reverse shrimp. Shrimp, pummel. Reverse shrimp. Shrimp, pummel. Reverse shrimp, shrimp. Pummel. All right. Let's play around with that for a second, and then I'll show some uh, practical application for it. <clears throat> play around with pummeling single legs, double legs, and the shrimp and pummel. All Good. All right, Armando, come here. So I always say that um, jujitsu is a, is primarily about establishing and maintaining inside control and then dominating from there, right? Either sweeping or finishing <coughs> or whatever. Okay. So one way that I can use this leg pummel, one good drill to do if you have a partner is go ahead and get on the knees. Okay. Just scoop like you're going to uh, stack past me. Right. So if he's, if he's going to stack past me here, this is a real problem if he gets my knee close to his, uh, or sorry, my knee close to my face, right? So immediately, as soon as I feel that arm come under, I'm just gonna pummel my leg around in the inside position. He goes to the other side, I'm pummeling. He goes, pummel. He goes, I pummel, okay? Now, if he's putting a little more pressure on me, right, I'm gonna shrimp. And pummel. He goes the other side. I'm going to shrimp. Notice I'm using, I can't put this foot to the floor. So I'm using the weight of his arms to elevate my hips and shrimp and pummel. He goes under. I shrimp and I pummel. So if you've got a partner, do that. If you don't, kind of imagine a person scooping under one leg, then under the other, and then imagine them adding a little more pressure and do, doing the shrimp and pummel.
Good. All right, time. Okay, the last thing we're going to cover today is the leg scissor. Okay, so the basic movement is I'm just scissoring my legs. My hips are coming off the floor. I'm scissoring my legs. Now, many times when I do this, when I do this live, I'm going to end up up on my shoulders. So, you know, if I'm here, maybe I can't quite get to my shoulders because I'm just kind of going back and forth and scissoring my legs. If you have a wall or that couch behind you, Carrie, would work well. I can put my feet on the wall and start with my leg scissored and then come up onto my shoulders and just walk my legs back and forth. Okay. If I have a partner, let's go ahead and sit down here, Rhonda. A lot of times I'll use their hips, right? I start with the leg scissors. Go ahead and sit back a little bit. Good. I start with the leg scissored here. Then I bring my foot up and over, kind of walking on my shoulders. Got it? Give that a shot. Been doing any conditioning? I mean, yeah, in my classes. <laughs> yeah. But no, not too much. No, I need to work on it. Like you said, just feeling bad, feeling lazy. Yeah. Good, because I might have you do the rucksack workout today. <laughs> Did it last night. I am uh, not like a one star recovery today. No bueno. Okay, good. All right, now let me show you how this applies most of the time, all right? Kind of the easiest one I'll show first. Um, number one, because you can see it better, right? It makes a lot of sense, is when somebody goes to leg drag me. So a leg drag, he's taking one of my legs and he's dragging it across his body. Okay, I'm gonna post on his shin, I'm gonna shrimp, I'm gonna bring this up to his opposite hip, and then switch. He goes to leg drag the other leg. I shrimp. I frame the shin. I'm here like this. Okay. Switches. Shrimp. Frame. Okay. Now sometimes I don't even have to shrimp. I can just bring the foot up. Depending on how bad he leg drags me, right? So leg drag me again, Armando. You know, sometimes I can just bring that foot right up right away. Okay. Other times when he leg drags. I'm going to hit my shrimp, come up, and go here. So a lot of people say, why don't you, when, when he does this, why don't you just, like, bring this foot up here, right? Or when do you need the shrimp and when don't you? If it's a weak leg drag, you don't need the shrimp. If I just bring the foot up in here, though, and he leg drags my leg and he starts to go knee on belly, right, if I bring the foot up to the near side, I'm not getting enough elevation, right? I'm stuck on neon belly, okay? So I wanna bring, when he comes over like that, I wanna bring this over, or some people say, why don't you just bring the inside leg in? So this, is a, this will happen a lot too. They'll go like this, leg drag, and they'll just bring their legs back up, okay? But if he beats me, if we go, now I'm stuck here. So I'm gonna have to come up, bring the far side leg all the way across and then reset. All right, so get used to doing the right thing. I'll see people do this drill all the time. They'll bring that inside leg up, inside leg up, inside leg up, and it's wrong, okay? You gotta get used to bringing that outside leg up and over. The other area 
that it's practical is um, go ahead and get on your knees, Armando. You kind of get into this passing position, right? Where you have your shin across their hips. Can everybody see my shin here? Okay, my shin's across Armando's hips, right? And he's trying to push that knee through. Okay, so I'm gonna frame here. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna bring this foot inside, right? Put it on his hips, remove the other leg, and reset, okay? Now we can switch sides. My shin's here, right? I'm framing, I'm shrimping a little bit if I need to, bringing this foot in, making the switch. We're here, right? I'm here, leg comes over, I'm making the switch, okay? Kind of a final drill we can do is, uh, yeah, scoop grip, right? So he kind of is getting this leg up a little too high now, right? I can't just pummel out of it. So I'm shrimping, bringing this knee down, this foot in, okay? Now, as I come here, oops, hold on. One way I can flow with this is if I'm here like this and I build my frame, I turn this knee down, right? And I start to bring this foot over. Let's say he passes this side now. I bring this knee in, this foot over, right? I can just leave it up here, right? Let's say he passes this side. I bring this foot in, this leg over. Frame, 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 frame. That might be a little more difficult for most of you to do right away. So if this is your first time doing this, start with just the leg drag option, right? You're standing. Dragging my leg, shrimping, scissor, here. Shrimping, scissor, here. Okay? All right, let's try it. Good, Carrie. Good, Alexa. Start calling her Siri. Mm -hmm. Except for my phone will start talking to me. Mm Good, Ashley. Okay, good, good. So quick review of today, right? We did the side control, boom, swimming underneath, right? Getting rid of this uh, shoulder control on our, on our head. Boom, another bump, scissoring my feet, coming up, right? I can have to sit through if I wanna get back to my position and then do the drill again, okay? We did the, um, Standing in base, here, and then here with the snap down for the headlock, right? Or a re-entry to a guard pull or a sweep. <clears throat> we did the leg pummeling. 
in lake pummel with the shrimp. Right? We did the leg scissoring. Okay, so now when you're going through your movement drills, you can fall back, shrimp, leg pummel, shrimp, leg pummel, scissor, right? Scissor, okay? Um, I can come up, scoop, fall back, bump, power shrimp. Right, I can trap arm, trap foot, tilt my head, come up to my knees, sit through. Right, I can go side to side here. Okay, I can go arm lock defense. All right, so now I have a variety of movements that I can start to play around with on my own. And I think it helps like if you, if you're alone and doing it to kind of at least say the names in your head, if not out loud. Right. If other people are around, maybe you want to like not say anything so you don't seem crazy, but at least verbally recognize what you're doing in your head. You're not just moving to move. You're moving to like improve your position. Okay. Any questions on the stuff we covered today? Cool. All right. Good deal. Well, I volunteer Armando to take you through a rucksack workout today because he needs it. All right, um, if you've got a kettlebell or a sack, we'll get it going. Um, we'll probably do two rounds today. We'll go back to the one we did last Monday night. It's gonna start with kettlebell swings. Kettlebell swings here. Right, if you got a heavy backpack, it's good. Make sure it's a good backpack. It's not gonna fall apart when you do this. Here, up, right. Then we're gonna do rows, upright rows. We'll bring it up to our head. Good. And then we do, um, I believe it's push-ups. I would recommend, um, Yeah, so next it's squats. You put the backpack on your back and you do squats, or if you got a kettlebell, hold it in front of you. Do front squats, and it's push ups for the push ups. Um, I'd recommend not having it on your back because we're doing them for 30 seconds, so that's going to be tough for most people. But if you're just doing a set of 10 or something with your push ups, you can put that rucksack on for a different level of resistance. Then you're going to do sit throughs with the backpack on your back. If you have a kettlebell, just do normal sit throughs. But if you have the backpack, you're going to have it on your back. Just sitting through for 30 seconds. And then you're gonna plank with the backpack on here like this and bring your knees up to your elbows for 30 seconds. And then that's it. This is an easier one than the one that we did last night. Um, the clock that I said is 30 seconds of live time and then 30 seconds rest. Okay, if it's too easy for you, you can always do more rounds. You know, I recommend generally three rounds. You can do more rounds or you can shorten the duration, the rest, right? So you could do 30 seconds with 15 second rest. Okay? All right, let's see how Armando does. He's like, come on, man. You gonna make me do this? Actually, I got a backpack over here if you wanna try it. Kettlebell. All right, if you want to work hard, I got a backpack over here. <laughs> All right, 10 second countdown, so wind your knees a little bit around it. Make sure you keep that back straight. You really push with your hips. Three, two, one, go. There you go. Ten seconds, don't die on me. <laughs> Time. Rest. Next is gonna be upright rows. 
right? Upright rows right here. Mm. 15 seconds left of your rest. Ready, go. Stand a little more straight up on this. The bag doesn't have to touch. There you go. Good, Carrie. Try to get that a little higher up about your shoulders. There you go, Ashley. Rest. Okay, now you're going to put the weight on your back. If you have a kettlebell, you're going to lock it into your front and do front squats. You got a backpack, do back squats. Ten seconds. Ready? Go. Ah, you get the weighted vest. Five seconds, come on. Time. Last one in the series is planks, right? Bringing your knees up to your elbows. If you have a pack or a vest on, keep it on. Oh, I'm sorry. This one is uh, sit through, so keep the pack on or the vest. Be nice and slow for your shoulders here, okay? Hey, okay, don't go too fast. Five seconds. How's your body feel? My arm is still like slightly. Ready? Bad. Go. Yeah, be nice and controlled. Like that weakness I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of really good. Like, those are really get your core. You just gotta make sure your shoulders stable all throughout. <laughs> on the sit throughs, just make sure your shoulders are stable all the way through. If you've got weight on, do it nice and slow. I think I skipped push ups. Did we do push ups? Yeah. Boy, I'm all over the place. <laughs> Time, rest. Sorry, we skipped push ups. We're going to go back to push ups, then we'll finish with the plank, knee to elbow. Well, I got time for one round. These always take longer than I think. I'm like 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. It's like much when you got one, two, three, four, five, six exercises. Yeah, push ups are really hard right now. All right, push ups. Ready? Go. Modify them if you need to. We could carry with the bat, with the weighted vest on. Oh, there you go. You can do modified if you need to with the best. She's like, no, I'm a Marine. I'm doing real push-ups. <laughs> the left one, huh? Yeah. Time. Good. Now we've got the plank knee to elbows. This will be the last one. We're running out of time. Put the pack on or the vest, good. You're not gonna be able to do these with a kettlebell, Ash. I do got weighted vests in the back as well if you ever wanna do it with one of those. Just let me know, I'll dig it out for you. Three, two, one, go. Bring those knees up to your elbow, good. Good. Two minutes until your session went long. Aaron. All right, time. Good job. Go ahead. Get out. All right, good. So, you know, if you want to do two more sets, feel free when we jump offline.
Um, Ashley, you're good? All right. Cool. You guys uh, have any questions for me? Everybody seem to do okay? Hold on, I'm trying to unmute everybody. All right, good. good. Everybody seem to do okay? Yeah. Good. So as you get better at that, use it's a good way just to hit a quick workout. You know, hit it and quit it. Go through it once, twice, three times, you know. Increase the duration of the exercise, decrease the rest, whatever you need to do to make it harder. All right. All right. Peace out. See you Thanks, all. Baby. Uh huh. Bye. That'll do it.